Alright, I want to start first by giving our praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kodash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh Shai, the name of his only begotten Son, whom the world ignorantly called Jesus. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Mother Stone who taught me this truth and whose lead are examples to the flock to this day, you know, as examples of diligence and perseverance, you know, and general stick to itiveness. You know, these men have been laboring in the faith for decades, you know, and are examples are examples to us young men, you know, of holding out, you know, um, hopefully until the very end. You know. Citations also to you Akim out there who are pushing this word in all sincerity and to the rest of the, the believers, the men, women and children who make up the large multitude, you know, shalom to you and your families as well. Alright, this lesson is gonna be entitled, you know, don't give up the prize for the consolation prize. All right? Don't give up the prize for the consolation prize. You know, and this lesson was inspired through the spirit, you know, by watching um listening to this 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 video by the El Apostle Arim Lab, you know, he um he believe he read Luke chapter six, you know, and he spoke about, you know, which which talked about, you know, they that be rich now having their consolation, you know, and you know, the spirit led me to um to thinking about, you know, what a consolation prize is, you know, and in, in the context of this truth, you know, pretty much the consolation prize is this world. You know, having your um your 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 riches, you know, your cars, um a good job, you know. That, that family life, you know, whatever it is, you know, having good in this life in exchange for good in the kingdom, you know, is a um, pretty much consolation prize, you know. So the idea is to, to exhort, you know, myself, you know, and brothers and sisters as well, you know, to, um, to press toward the real price and not settle for the consolation price. Now we're going to get the definition here in the Collins Dictionary. It says, um, consolation prize. A consolation prize is a small prize which is given to a person who fails to win a competition, right? And the competition that we're, 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 we're trying to win, you know, is what? The kingdom, salvation, you know, that's, that's the prize, you know? A consolation prize is something that is arranged for or is given to a person to make them feel happier when they have failed to achieve something better, right? So that's something better, as I said, that's the kingdom, that's the goal, that's the real prize. Right? But settling, you know, for Esau's kingdom, settling for what is here now, that's a consolation price. Right? We're gonna start here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. It says, Know ye that they which run a run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. Right? And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. And the word temperate there goes back to self-mastery, having control over yourself, over your impulses, right? And that's necessary in this truth, right? Because in this truth, our greatest enemy is ourselves. You know, our very own flesh, our appetites, our lusts, you know, our moods. You know, these things constitute what, what be the, the, um, the, the, the greatest enemy to our walk in this truth, right? So temperate is ne to be temperate is necessary. So that's why the scripture says that every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things. You know, even if you're, you're, um, you're competing for something carnal, you know, like for example, um, in track and field or boxing or whatever it is, you have to be temperate, meaning you have to be able to give up, you know, certain things, you know, to give up certain pleasures, if, if even for a time, you know, in order to get that prize, yo. It says, no, they do it for, to obtain a corruptible crown, you know, maybe um, a boxing belt, you know, a gold medal, um, the World Cup, right now the World Cup is going on. That's our corruptible crown, right? But we are incorruptible because we run or we fight, we strive, you know, for the ultimate prize, which is salvation, eternal life. You know, being gods on the earth. He said, I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself to be a, should be a castaway and what? Settle for the consolation prize. We don't want to do that, right? This is Luke chapter 6 and verse 24. He says, but woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation, right? So this doesn't mean that if you're rich in this world, that you won't make it into the kingdom, right? But as Yahweh Shai himself rightly said, it is easier, right, for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven, right? Because when you're rich in this world, 
you're more than likely gonna what gonna trust in your riches yo right as the scripture say um you know trust not in uh in uncertain riches let me let me let me get that all right this is um first timothy 6 verse 17 it says charge them that are rich in this world meaning admonish them warn them right that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but in the living god who giveth us richly all things to enjoy that they do good that they be rich in good works ready to distribute meaning to share and willing to communicate you know so for the most part people who are rich in this world you know they have more to lose right so it's harder for them to give up all of that you know just like the young man that came to Yahweh Shai I said good ma good master what should I do you know in order to inherit the kingdom and he you know Yahweh Shai said you know thou shall not commit adultery thou shall not steal love thy neighbor as thyself you know I, I don't think he said that one but you know the young man said these things have I done from my youth up so Yahweh Shai said what sell all that you have and come and follow me and he was pricked in the heart he couldn't do that because the more you have in this world is the more you have to lose right so chances are you're rich in this world right you've already received your consolation because you're not wanna you're not gonna want to give this up in order to receive the kingdom because the more you have to lose all right or the more you have to give up is the harder it's gonna be for you to give that up right that's why you know in uh, in proverbs chapter um chapter 30 I believe it's Proverbs chapter 30. You know, it says this, right? Uh, right. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 7. Two things have I required of thee, deny them, deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies, give me neither poverty nor riches, feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? So this is why most people who are rich in worldly possession right it's hard for them to make it in this truth it's hard for them to make it into the end because when you're full when you're comfortable right the flesh is going to pull you more towards these worldly comforts and you're going to deny your how so that there's a special spirit you know that have to be put on you you know to really um deny the riches that you have deny the comforts that you have but when you're suffering you're going to more want to call on your how to deliver you right so that's why the scripture says you know woe unto them that are rich for you have received your consolation prize. You've received your cars, you, you, your nice salary, and a nice wife, a nice house. You know, whatever other material things you've accumulated. You know, that's your consolation prize. Right? That's your consolation prize. Right? This is um, 2 Timothy 4 verse 7. Right? This is Paul speaking. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness with the Lord. The righteous judge shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So we want to be able to say this. We want to be able to say, we have fought the good fight. We have finished the course. As Yahweh Shai said, he that endured unto the end, the same shall be saved. Not he that endured to halfway, three quarter of the way, 99% of the way, right? Right up to the 11th hour and you drop out. No, because as the scripture says in Ezekiel, if the righteous turn from his righteousness and do wickedness, all his righteousness that he has forgotten, will, will he has done, will be forgotten. Right? So it's about doing it what? Right up to the very end. So if you do it from the first hour up to the 11th hour and then you fall out, right? The man that comes in at the 11th hour and does it for just an hour will be um, delivered. But you that did it for most of the time but fell out at the end, you won't be delivered. Because it's about what? Enduring unto the end. It's about them who... At his coming, Yahweh shall find so doing, right? Them that did not uh, um, choose the consolation prize over the real prize, right? This is Romans chapter 8, verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. So we have to remind ourselves and be kingdom minded, you know, think on the kingdom, think on the promises, you know, think on the word. And, and the, the gospel, you know, the descriptions that's there for the kingdom, you know, meditate on these things and, and, and you know, remind yourself what the scriptures say, you know, stir up um, your pure mind by way of remembrance, you know, remind yourself that, hey, what we're fighting for, right, is not worth it, um, it, it what, we're, what we're going through now, or even what this world has to offer, is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us when we make it to the kingdom you know, right and moses was a perfect example of that you know i always bring this out moses was a prince of egypt 
Moses grew up, you know, in the house of Pharaoh, right? The Pharaohs back then, you see me, um, they, 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 they thought themselves to be God and they were worshipped as, as gods. So can you imagine um, Moses being raised as the, the son of Pharaoh's daughter? He had riches, right? Probably had plenty of women, you know, plenty of gold, horses, you know, other um, substances, you know. But what? He gave that up. This is Hebrews 11 and verse 20, um, verse 24, it says, By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of Yahweh than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So he chose the prize rather than to settle for the consolation prize. Right? Esteeming the reproach of Yahweh shy greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had recompense on for he had respect Salakia unto the recompense of the reward. So he understood that what he was fighting for, even though Moses didn't physically make it into the land, right? He will, you know, um, in, in the end, because what Moses is, um, is King David, and and Peter, if you can receive it, you know. So he had respect unto the unto the recompense of the reward. So he understood that what he was fighting for was much greater than the treasures of Egypt, yo. Much, much greater than the treasures of Egypt, right? That's like somebody being raised in the house of the Rothschilds right now and giving that up, right? To what? To, to, to go out on the highways and the byways and, and preach the word. That's a massive change, yo. That's a massive uh, um, leap of faith, right? That's a massive leap of, of faith, right? This is um, Second Ezra chapter 7. And I'll start from verse um, 41. It says, Even now, seeing corruption is grown up, and wickedness is increased, and the righteous have prayed for the ungodly, wherefore shall it not be so now also? He answered me, this is the angel speaking to Ezra, and said, This present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Therefore have they prayed for the weak. So we have to remember, you know, that this is not it. Right? The scripture says, This is not our rest. Arise ye and depart, for it's not our rest. It is, it is polluted. It will pollute you. Right? So this is not the price. This is the consolation price. This is that small, this is that certificate of participation that you get. Right? When you, you, you come last or you don't win. We don't want that. We want the real price. Right? So this present life is not the end where much glory doth abide. Right? But the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of immortality for to come. Wherein corruption is past, intemperance is at an end, infidelity is cut off, righteousness is grown, and truth is sprung up. Right? Then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed, nor to oppress him that has gotten the victory. So we want to be a part of that number, right? That's written of in Second Second Ezra chapter two, that stood so stiffly for the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, and that received crowns and palms. Yo, we want to be a part of that number. So we're we'll going to wrap here with Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then said Yahweh Shai unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. A.K.A. You got to give up the consolation prize to get the true prize. Right? Give up the consolation prize to get the true prize. Meaning, right? We're not going to win in this world. We're going to win in the kingdom. Give up winning here to win in the kingdom, yo. And there's no two ways about it, right? Because the point, even if you're, you're doing well now, you're probably doing well in your job, you know, um, you have a nice um, house, cars, you know, family, whatever it is, right? And you may be able to balance that with truth now, but the time is going to come, the, uh, that hour of temptation is going to come when you're going to have to choose between your Hawa and Mammon, right? Nobody's going to be able to straddle the line, yo, right? For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So if you're willing to give up the consolation prize as Moses did, you're gonna receive the true prize, which is immortality, right? And righteousness, you know, and everything that your, your heart cannot does not even know how to desire. Right? That's what we're gonna receive, yo. Isaiah 64 and 4 is an example of you know explaining what you're gonna we're gonna receive, yo. Isaiah 64 and 4 for since the beginning of the world, men have not heard neither perceived by the ear neither hath the eye seen O Yahweh beside thee what he hath prepared for him that waited for him so we remember these things we constantly remind ourselves of these things right that what 
the good is to come here. What we have now is a, 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 um, a weak replica, right, of what is to come here. Esau cannot give us the kingdom. Esau cannot give us the true Christ. What he's trying to do is trick you to accept the consolation price, to bow out now instead of continue to suffer unto the end. Right? So hopefully this lesson was edifying and exhorting to the Spirit. Shalom. Until next time.